question that I get often is, what is the most extroverted type? And the simple answer to that would be, I feel like there is not really a official answer for what the most extroverted type is because we have to then define which aspect of extroversion are we actually talking about. So what I mean by this is, for example, a lot of times when you go online, then you'll see a whole bunch of blogs and tests and stuff like that that say things like, oh, the ENFP is the most introverted extrovert. Um, and to my knowledge, again, it depends. There's different aspects of extroversion. So there is extroversion that pretty much has to do with putting things out in the world. Then there's extroversion with how much somebody talks then there's extroversion with you know how energetic somebody is and how bombastic and like just overly uh, boisterous that someone might be and when you look at all of these three different things things like you know then there's also like even extroversion in the sense of um, how often you like to be around people um, and some extroverts can have one or more of these and some of them might have a lot less um, and so all of that to say that there's different types of extroversion and so we can't necessarily like pin down which one is the most extroverted. But according to my knowledge, according to my, lo my logic, according to my you know theory, when you look at things like such as the notion that the ENFP is the most introverted of all of the extroverts, um, I would say that, yeah, in the sense that the ENFP does not necessarily have to be around people as much as maybe other extroverted types might want to deal with people in a way that could be true but then if we're talking about extroversion in the sense of you know them being a little bit more bo more boisterous and more energetic and giddy and stuff like that um then honestly that might be a little bit different because at least from my knowledge at least from my experience a lot of the enfps that i know are extremely talkative um, and are capable of lighting up a room. They bring so much charisma and they are very intense in like how much energy that they present. So it could be an almost like in your face type of, I am an extrovert in the most possible way. And then because they blast all of that energy at you at once, and you know, it's not a bad thing depending on who you are. You know, a lot of people really like that energy and they get excited and stuff like that. But once they blast all that energy at you or a lot of the NE rambles that they might have, then all of a sudden it's like, phew, man, I just drained myself out. So I'm gonna go retreat. And then they go into their FI and then they pretty much are not seen around people for a few days, you know? And I feel like, okay, so if that's the case, then how, how do we like necessarily like make a metric for that? Because they just extroverted quite a lot. Um, and that if that's, if anything, that's why now they need to go introvert so heavily because they blasted out so heavily and now they have to go and recuperate before they repeat the process. Again, this is not for every ENFP. Um, I have met maybe like, I've met a few, you know, like pretty low key, like um, not as loud or whatever ENFPs, but Generally speaking, most of the ENFPs that I know are boisterous and stuff like that in that way. Um, and then even with like, you know, ESFPs for like a lot of times, you know, you could see the ESFP in the sense of being like, oh, they're definitely the most extroverted because they're super boisterous and loud in a different way than the ENFP might be. But like, you know, like the stereotypical partier and, you know, like singing, performing, whatever that might be. But then you also a lot of times might meet an ESFP um, who actually is like pretty chill and their SE comes out in a way that's just kind of like, you know, like how Crush was from um, Finding Nemo, you know, where it's just kind of like, I'm just chilling, you know, I just, I'm just enjoying the vibe and all of that. And I love the thrill and excitement of certain moments, you know, like when Crush is going, righteous, righteous, you know, and so that is like an energetic burst, but then he goes right back to, so what brings you over to the EAC, you know, like the East Australian Current, you know, stuff like that, and he just has this like really chill vibe to him, but he's an extrovert, you know, I personally type Crush from, um, uh, from Finding Nemo as ESFP, and so 
would that mean that the ESFP is typically the most extroverted? Maybe, maybe not. Again, it depends on what you mean by extroversion. Now, you can also maybe think about the ENFJ or the ESFJ is the most extroverted. Now, due to stereotype, I would say that this, this could make sense, but again, it depends on which stereotype you're talking about. And once again, I can't speak for all ENFJs. I know that for me personally, I do actually really love being around people. Um, this does not mean that I never need alone time. I definitely need alone time and I love my alone time. Um, but I really love depth of connection. For me, the most important thing to me, like ever, is depth of connection. Um, and every, this is gonna freak a lot of you guys out, you know, especially the super, super introverted five type, like Enneagram five type people. But um, for me, depth of connection is the, uh, it's kind of like the life line for me like that's every waking moment I'm just seeking that you know and if I'm not finding like substantial bond making you know happening then I'm either going to go search for it elsewhere or now as of you know the past few years I've been learning to reverse that into myself um, because as an Enneagram 9 I found out that, oh, this makes sense. I'm always looking for that depth of connection and bonding with other people because maybe I have not really, I didn't really find myself as interesting or I didn't think that other people may have found me as interesting. And so instead I just try to go over to their sandbox. Um, but now as of like recent years, um, I've been really like digging into myself and I've been learning to find myself to be more interesting. And even if other people don't, that is okay. So that calls for a lot of like really deep introspective alone time but it's still like bonding. And then if anything, I like to explore that part of myself so that I can come out right back out to you guys or to like my closest intimates and share the things I've learned about myself or I've observed about, my, about myself with them. So in a way, it's almost like I introvert once again to extrovert. I still recharge by being by myself. I don't gain energy from being with people. Um, but I do like that, like being with people and exploring their minds and exploring concepts and all of that. And essentially building depth of connection is the most important thing for me as an ENFJ and potentially also influenced by that Enneagram 9. Um, and so if you're gauging the extroversion based off of that, that could be a thing. But I also don't necessarily view myself and others don't really describe me as somebody who's like super loud and like boisterous and all of that and on top of that if um if i am seeing that an interaction is not producing fruit of bonding and substance and you know what would i call um what i would call you know like just having a meaningful bond and like merge with each other then i'm not going to invest energy there um, and again, this is just me speaking as an ENFJ. Um, maybe other ENFJs are, other, are another way, but I really do not like to invest um, energy and time into relationships and bonds that I don't really see um, making uh, a meaningful um, fruit, like building enough fruit, which is what I've talked about in my uh, video on how to manage your social energy, you know, like your limited source of water. And so that means you have to cultivate the garden that you have. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with an apple tree, but if you don't want an apple tree in your garden, then don't water the apple tree, you know, what are the trees and the plants that you actually want to. So that's how me, I guess, as an ENFJ, um, I view things like I always want to be watering these plants. And so if so the simple fact that I always want to water plants is what would make me the most extroverted type, then I could go with that. But if it's based off of the metric of how talkative someone might be, or you know, like how loud and consistently boisterous that might be, I don't think that might be the, um, the right analogy or the right metric for me as an ENFJ, um, or maybe even other ENFJs as well. Um, but you know, you guys let me know what you think. And also, even going to the ENTJ. Now, the ENTJ, they are actually the type that can be very easily mistaken for their introverted counterpart, the INTJ. Several ENTJ can be easily mistaken for INTJ because a lot of times, they're not really as, they're not the types that are like, you know, 
are always going to be as like dictators as you might think and that are you know super like the types like bark at you and everything if anything a lot of times they can be again confused for ISTP and INTJ because they are like you know like watching things more closely and a lot of times they don't really want to deal with people because extroverted thinking is their dominant function and that's not really a people oriented function and so by this gauge you might automatically be like bam then that means that they are the you know least extroverted type of all the types but hold on again different facets of extroversion if we're going by extroversion having to deal with people yeah probably not if we're dealing with extroversion having to be with like you know really loud boisterous yeah probably not but what about extroversion having to do with putting things out there in the world now that's where you might get a little spin the ENTJ is very very good at producing and putting things out in the world and if anything like you know a lot of times like TE DOMS ENTJs and ESTJs they are very skilled at putting things out there in the world um, and you know kind of producing in a way and if we're gauging their extroversion based off of that then sure people might annoy them but people usually annoy them because people get in the way of them getting things done which is what extroverted thinking is essentially all about you know like getting things done but it's also about you know like the efficiency and you know kind of like seeing things as like will this work will it won't will it, will it not work etc when we're looking at the most extroverted type in that sense other types may not output nearly as much as the ENTJ does um, and so perhaps that could be the quote unquote most extroverted type but again doesn't really check all of the boxes for the rest of them and so once again what would you then say is really the most extroverted type and you can even do this again with the types like the ESFJ and the ESTJ um, and just keep on going down that line you know to see like with all of the extroverted types the ENTP I believe that ENTPs with the exception of ENFPs in my personal experience they talk a lot and they they can keep on talking too like they can just brrr. does that mean that there's never you're never gonna run into a quiet ENTP not necessarily um, but I from my experience they do talk quite a lot um, but again does that mean that they're the most extroverted type well they're not extroverted in the sense that they're always like putting things maybe out there in the world they are a little bit more they're they are like boisterous in the same sense that the ENFP might be um, and so again we have to like think about okay what what are we gauging this metric of extroversion on and if you are gauging it on one or all of these aspects then maybe it's gonna be based off of like okay who checks the most boxes from there because even then just like kind of like what I said um, about me speak like speaking personally as an ENFJ and even from other ENFJs that I've met you know like especially really healthy ones they're not going to invest their energy into cultivating a dynamic or like speaking with not necessarily like not speaking with people like but building a relationship and investing in a relationship with you know people that are not really going to be longer term and so instead they'd rather just keep to themselves and then they can come off seem a little bit a lot more intro introverted in that case um, and so in the same sense you know you'll see a lot of um, ENTPs perhaps that might not even feel the need to like talk or share certain thoughts with certain people because they feel like okay well nobody's gonna really like get my quips and my banter like you know this is just gonna like fall onto dead soil and so what's the point of me like maybe like talking you know and it all depends on like okay do I want to really engage or do I not want to really engage you know they might just get really sucked into an introverted thinking part of themselves because again our auxiliary function as extroverts is going to be an introverted function and no matter how extroverted you are we all need to tap into that introverted function that our um, co-pilot um, and so again uh, which type would be the most extroverted some of you probably may have already guessed there's not really in my opinion a most extroverted type nor in my opinion do I think is there a most most introverted of the extroverted types because one extroverted counterpart is always going to like 
get in the way of the other. Like, for example, even, with the ENFJ, even though they might be completely, like, FE is all about, like, you know, people and all of that, and, like, connecting and stuff like that, introvert intuition, which is a secondary function, that's a function that requires absolute silence and sensory deprivation. So that means, like, pretty much, like, no people around and no sunlight and, like, just, you know, like, just com being completely in a sensory deprivation type of tank um, where you're able to just be there with your mind and, f and wander the garden of your mind. And so if you have that as a dominant function, extroverted feeling, and then you go into such a very sensory deprived place in your mind, does that really then mean that you're the most extroverted type? But then when you look at the ENFP, who again, might be super boisterous and might give all of these ideas and might NE ramble for days, you know, but then they have to go back into their FI um, and that's where they reassess and they, they kind of like think like, okay, I just made, I just had all these experiences and I just did this and I just did that and I like discovered this philosophy I just like you know you know ran into this philosophy and I started doing that what does this all have to do with me and they start reassessing all of their values and everything that's taking a lot of introverted time and so again would they then also be considered the most introverted of the extroverts even after putting out so much we don't know and this could once again just keep on going for like every type um, so at the end of the day, I guess my opinion is that we cannot really decide um, definitively what would be the most extroverted personality type um, or even what would be considered the most introverted of the extroverted personality types. However, if we were to say which one would be which, then I think it would just be most important to make it known by which standard of extroversion are we talking about? Are we talking about the output um, and production of things, you know, that TE might do? Or are we talking about the engaging with people and loving that depth of connection like FE might be? Or are we talking about, you know, how talkative someone might be, you know, like how NE might be? Or are we talking about, you know, again, like, not just the output of doing things, but like just doing things in general, like somebody who's just always running out to like, you know, go surfing and partying and doing this and doing that, even if they're not necessarily like talking with many people or like, you know, actually like doing whatever, but they're just having a thrill and a blast like SE might be. These are all four of the extroverted um, cognitive functions. And now that would be up to you to decide which one necessarily would be the most extroverted if there's even such a thing so let me know what you guys think what experiences have y'all had um this was just a random riff that i wanted to go ahead and put out there um for those who may have been wondering and you know just have y'all think a little bit um about this question and maybe even be slow to believe these articles when you read um the most extroverted and the least introverted and at the end of the day also like who really cares because at the end of the day every healthy type needs introverted time and it's not necessarily a a uh, a badge of honor to be introverted you know um i i think that we over idealize introversion a lot of times um and sometimes we also we also over idealize extroversion because we do have we do live in a world where extroversion is rewarded um, but now we also live in a world where people, everybody wants to identify as an introvert because then that makes them seem more cerebral and it makes them seem more just overall smart, wise, private, mysterious and stuff like that. And at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter um, whether you're more extroverted or more introverted. Just be you. And I guess that's my thoughts on that. So y'all let me know what y'all's thoughts are. Um, let me know what you think about what I said pertaining to all of this what types you might feel um would be the most extroverted by which metric are you gauging that based off of and why and done